Waste is a waste of resources. Every single one of us generates around a kilogram of waste every day. Multiply that figure by nearly half a billion EU citizens and it quickly becomes clear that managing our waste is a major challenge. But it's also an opportunity. The resources it contains can be recycled and reused to overcome the environmental impacts of waste disposal and reduce our needs for primary raw materials. Bill Duncan, who advises businesses on the use of natural resources, explains. There is a huge stock of raw material in society. I think there's enough aluminium and steel which could be recycled to support 400 years of economic growth. It's already here, it's not in the mountains, it's not in the ground, and we can recycle that effectively and maintain our use of that. The EU has been pushing for change towards the better management of waste for over 30 years. The first major European law on rubbish was passed in 1975. It told governments to draw up clear waste management plans. Since then, we've come a long way. For example, the 1994 Packaging Waste Directive aims to reduce and reuse increasing quantities of cardboard, plastic and other assorted wrapping that surrounds the consumer goods we all buy in ever-increasing quantities. It encourages more and more people to sort their everyday waste. Another key piece of legislation designed to ensure that waste does not harm people nor the environment is the 1999 Landfill Directive, which aims to reduce the adverse effects of the landfill of waste on the environment. For example, it prevents landfill sites from polluting soil and groundwater. It also helps to fight climate change by reducing emissions of the powerful greenhouse gas, methane. In 2000, the EU adopted legislation on the recycling of cars. Scrapped vehicles are currently estimated to generate around 8 to 9 million tons of metal, glass and plastic every year. Already today, 80% of end-of-life cars have to be recycled. To ensure they can be turned into clean, safe new materials, certain hazardous substances are now banned in new cars. Nick van Kessel, who runs a successful car parts recycling company in the Netherlands, explains how the new legislation has affected his business. These new rules help us to our business further to professionalize. These new rules have helped our company to become even more professional. They've also helped to get rid of unfair competition. Now all companies must follow the same rules and regulations. That helps us to increase demand for our activities and find more business partners. Similar legislation and thinking ensured in 2002 that so-called electronic scrap, Europe's ever-increasing mountain of fridges, old televisions, computers and such like, is stripped of any hazardous substances and recycled as much as possible. This means that resources recovered systematically at the end of a product's lifespan can be used to make new goods. And here's the good news. Newspapers in the EU contain over 80% of recycled paper. Overall, about half of the metals, glass and paper produced in the EU are made of recycled materials. As recycling requires less energy than making primary materials, this reduces the EU's greenhouse gas emissions by 5% a year. That's the equivalent of taking 75 million cars off the road. These achievements require commitment at local level. Officials in Rennes in Western France, a city that claims to operate one of the most up-to-date household waste recycling plants in the country, say they meet regularly with colleagues from other European towns to share experiences. Everyone has their own particular experiences, on waste prevention for example. But we all have different waste cultures and histories. So when we meet up, we can share experiences and move forward quickly. Instead of trying things we already know don't work, we can concentrate on what does and get people involved. A comprehensive European strategy on the prevention and recycling of waste, unveiled by the European Commission at the end of 2005, 
aims to bring Europe even closer to a recycling society where yesterday's waste will become tomorrow's resources. This will require new ways of looking at how we design products, how we manufacture and how we consume. And as new countries join the European Union, it's an environmental and economic philosophy that's spreading all the time.